there! Have you ever wanted to make your own VTuber? Or you want to start VTubing yourself and you don't know where to start? Well, I'm here to show you guys how I made my own VTuber and how I divided it into its components for rigging. So as you can see here, I have my character illustration page next to me, or my character sheet. I have a front view, back view, and side view. You don't actually need this if you're just going to be making a live 2D model, but I like to have it for reference on how the 3D aspects or how components would adjust and manipulate around as I look left and right. And so if I want to make a 3D model in the future, I have a reference point to start from. But like I said, you don't need it. Whenever making your concept art, I do recommend having a solid idea before starting. It's a good place to start and to understand what you're going for. Is it spooky? Is it sweet? And you'll be able to get a very cohesive and nice design. As you can see for me, I was going for a bit more of a spookier aspect, a bit more of a monster girl design, and it can be clearly seen through multiple parts as my hair being wings, my taloned feet, and my eyeballs everywhere. So here's my model itself, or the illustration for my model. One thing I'm going to say is when making your model, remember to keep your canvas size pretty big. My canvas is around 7,000 pixels wide and 10,000 pixels tall, if I'm not mistaken. So I do recommend that your smallest portion for your model, whether it be your width or your height, be no less than 7,000 pixels at 300 dpi. This just makes sure that when you bring it over to Live 2D, you don't end up with a low resolution model as you get closer to the camera and will allow your model to look more crisp and you won't end up, like I said, with pixelation all throughout your face. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> but yeah, so when looking at our model, we're going to look at how I separated pieces of the body and then we're going to move on to the face. So why don't we start with the arms themselves? So for the arms itself, I'm going to show off my right arm. I'm not going to show off how I did my T hands and stuff this time. That's a bit more of a complex component, but let's look at how I did my base arms. So here is my base right arm. I'm going to zoom in on that for you. Be back in a minute. There we go. There's my base arm. So my base arm without all of my feathers is pretty simple. I have my upper arm, my middle arm, the upper portion of my hand, and the back fingers. I just kept this pretty simple since my hands are just doing idle animations most of the time. So I ended up doing, keeping this simple. For my model in particular, I do have eyeballs and stuff. So I have my front portion of my feathers, my middle portion of my feathers, and the back portion. This just allows me to have a fluffier movement as my arms rest. I do have this little feather here that would sit right here behind all of these feathers. I found personally that when I rigged this, having that feather separate made it a little easier for me but you can keep that probably connected. So now moving on, we'll look into how I separated my leg. So I'm gonna grab my right leg here. I'm gonna pull this over, there it is. So first thing that you can see is there's a little part of my leg left here behind. This is the upper portion of my feathers. This is just an additional piece for myself. It allows me to rig this and move it separate from the rest of it and allows me to also rig the feathers on here to give a little fluff. I have my upper thigh separated from my bottom calf or the bottom half of my leg and I have my foot separated from my leg as well you may not be able to see at this angle so let's zoom in a little bit so now that we've zoomed in a little bit you can see that I have a little bit of a dark section here between where my ankle would connect to my foot this allows when it's hidden behind and when I adjust it nothing really shows and it deforms nicely in live 2d a little bit of overlap, like I said, is great. However, when it comes to the feet and the legs, I find having a little bit more is a little bit more helpful. So let's move up the leg. So I can see here, I do have that little bit of extra between the knee and the thigh again here. My thigh, I have separated into two pieces. Actually, I have it separated into the kneecap section, the actual thigh section, and the little feathers that poke out from behind my leg, just for three dimensionality. But I do have these three separated so it allows me to move this thigh to give it a little thigh jiggle separate and also so I can jiggle the feathers here along my leg separately as well. Honestly, if you have pretty simple legs such as just legs with stockings or just pants, you could keep 
your thigh pieces with your knee together. That would probably be the easiest for you, but I just did this for my own purposes on how I separated it. All right, now that we've examined how I've separated the arms and the legs, let's look how I separated the torsos. So I do have what I call my upper torso, which is what we're going to examine first, and then I have my bottom torso. So let's look at the upper torso, like I said. As you can see, my upper torso is composed of quite a few pieces. The main piece you can probably notice is my long toga that hangs down. Since this is just a piece of fabric that will be adjusting with my movements left and right of my upper body and my torso, I attached it there. My toga is made of some pretty simple sections, just the main section of the fabric. And then I have a little dangle down here, which you probably can't see, so I'll zoom in on it. As you can see, my little dangle here for my torso is made up of the bow, the gem, and the tassel. Pretty simple. The more I separated it, the more it allows me to make it move and bop. Now moving on to the torso that most people are thinking of, the actual upper component of the body, such as the chest area and anything combined with that. My chest area is pretty simple in comparison to some other rigs that you could do. So the actual base of my chest I have as one solid piece. This could be separated into the back of the chest and then the actual boobas themselves if you wanted to give them a little bit more physics. I do it this way just for my own purposes. With my model, this is what made the most sense, so I left it like that. But my torso, again, let's separate it into the main back section as you can see. It includes all of my ch upper chest, including the bobas themselves, and any of the outfit that would go alongside it. I then have my upper strap for my chest. This is what goes right across my chest, like you see here. I have this separated so as I do my left and right, I can adjust where the actual clasp lands, giving me a more accurate look. I have my tassels, as you see here. I also have shadows for these tassels, so as they reflect, down onto my chest it gives a little bit of a nice movement more three-dimensionality which is something that i like with my models and then i have the actual tassels themselves and the shadows for the tassels again just to reflect onto the model and give it a bit more three-dimensionality i do have and then i have my shine for my little belt clasp that you see here i'll turn off the clipping that i have for that so you can see it's actually just some long lines of light. This is so when I look left and right, I can have like a little pop of a shine that appears out of nowhere. But it looks really nice and just gives it a bit more of life to your model. I then also have the actual clasps themselves, which as you can see are all shaded in one piece. I kept those together since they're just going to be moving. Pretty simple. And I felt that's just what worked best for my model. You could separate both of these, separate them even further into a front face and then a back plate that would show even more three-dimensionality for them. I, like I said, this is what worked best for my model, so that's how I left it. I have the under boob strap for my belt that goes under my boob. I have the knot for under the boob. The dangles for the under the boob belt. And I have the shadows that go alongside that. I then also have the underside of my shirt that would be popping out from under the boobas or under the belt that appears under my boobas. And that's just what, that is just a personal preference for my outfit. If you had, for example, like a t-shirt or something like that, you could do something similar. I do recommend trying to separate them as much as you can. This will just allow, if you want to have physics for your chest area, will allow you to have those physics in place. Like I said, the more you separate, the easier it will be for yourself. It just depends on the design of your model, but this is how I separate the upper torso of my body. Let's look at how I do my lower torso now. So now that we've taken a look at the upper torso, we're gonna take a look at how I separate my lower torso. My lower torso is pretty simple. It's comprised of two parts, or more particularly, five parts for me just because of my side feathers that appeared on my thighs, but I wanted to show you how I did my torso. But yeah, so let's look at my torso. You can see here, my torso looks to be one solid piece. However, it's actually two pieces. I have the upper portion, which goes down past the belly button art, and I have my lower portion that would stop right about where my waist would be. I do this so that when it comes to deforming, I will connect both of these using gluing, and they will 
f they will stick about the same. They'll deform together. As I stretch to my right or stretch to my left, it will deform nicely. And it'll also allow me to have nice hip movement. So if I want to have a dance or have my hips sway left to right, I can do that. Also in my lower torso section, I have the backside of my shirt. So if you have any parts of your shirts or clothing from your upper torso that would appear in the back, put them in the torso section. I personally like to do this just to keep them organized and know that they're there with the torso because I have my shirt with my upper torso. Putting the back of the shirts with the bottom half of the torso just makes sense for me. Now that we're back at the face, it's time to start going through how I separate the pieces of my face. I'm going to start off with the eyes since they seem to be a very important part of the VTuber. They're what allows you to get your expressions and your your expressions and your emotions to come through. So I do think the eyes and the mouth are probably the most important part of your VTubers. So I want to show you how I separate my eyes since the eyes do have quite a bit of components. So I pulled my eye off here. This is my right eye. As you can see, there's a lot of components to this eye. So why don't we start breaking them down? I have, first of all, my cry aspect for my t for my eyes. As you can see, I have a cry emote. My cry emote is separated into two components. The upper tier, which is this piece here, and the lower tier. This lower tier is what will be used if you wanted to do a cry animation, such as the tears dripping down your cheeks. Separating those, like I said, will allow you to make that animation itself. I then have the side feathers of my face. I kept all of these together. You could separate them even farther, but because I just had a simple bounce to mine, I left them as one solid illustration. Now moving on to the actual eye itself, let's look at how I separated my components. I have my upper lashes. I separated these so I can add a bounce to them with physics in Live 2D. My upper eyelash. This is what will dictate what your eye looks open and if it looks closed. This will be the main component of your eye, allowing it to be opened and closed. I have the side piece of my eye. Keeping this separate from the upper component will ensure when your eye is closed, you don't have a crunched up deformed corner in, hidden in the side here, or your corner looks off and looks, the coloring doesn't fade nicely. So keeping this separate ensures that you can deform it in a way to hide it completely. You won't end up with anything sticking out the bottom or your eyelid crunching up and not being able to deform properly. I have a little tear effect here, so I have that separate, so as I stretch my face up and I stretch my face down, I can stretch it and shrink it according to the face. I have lower lashes. You don't need to have lower lashes in your model, but if you do separate them, you could separate them even further and make these individual lashes or the set of lashes separate from the bottom lash line. I kept them together since I'm they're pretty simple and they don't really do too much on my model, so I kept them together, but you can separate them. All right, now it's time to move on to the iris. The iris has a lot of components. I currently have mine clipped to the eye whites, or in my case, the eye black. So let's uh, unclip those so I can show you what it looks like. All right, taking a look at the iris, I'm gonna pull these all off to the side here so you can take a better look at them. So scoot those over so we can see them. There we go. So here's all the pieces of the iris. I have the eye whites or the eye shines. This is what gives your eyes that little glow. And this would be what light would be reflecting into your eyes. I have the pupil itself. I have eye shines. These will be what, if you open and close your eyes, things growing, shrinking, um, spinning all throughout your eyes. The more you separate these eye shines, the more effects you can put in your eye. As you can see, I have quite a few pieces. And this just, like I said, when you get up nice and close, you can see the physics active and it just gives a nice bounce and liveliness to your eyes. I also have on my iris a shaded, shaded portion that sits along the top of the eye. You don't need to have this. You could have this permanently stuck to the base of the iris, which is this. I personally like to have that. It just gives me a little bit of a gradient. It allows me to control the effect and where the shadow is coming from but like i said you don't actually need them so here is my eye here is my whole eye separation right here for you all to look at 
lots of components, lots of things. But like I said, the more you separate like the inner portions of your iris, the more physics you can get put in. But for the main base of your eye, you're going to need your iris, your pupil, your eye shines, the top of your eyelid, your eyelashes for the top, the side of your eye, the eye whites, the bottom eye lashes, and if you have a tear effect, you're going to need your tears. Another component of the eye itself is actually the eyelids. So let's take a look at my eyelids, which I have here. I actually have the eyelid base. So this is my eyelid base. It's covered in my makeup. Since I have a lot of eyeshadows and stuff, if you have eyeshadows, separate this from the shading around your eyes, such as under eye bags or shading in the inner corner of your eye up towards your eyebrow. Keep those separated. I also personally separate the eyelid line from any makeup and stuff. I just like how I can deform it and use a deforming um, line in Live 2D and I can just follow that curve perfectly and adjust it perfectly without having to worry about it causing de fractures in my vertexes throughout the other components of my eye. All right, now moving on to the next component, I'm gonna show you guys the head itself, like the head base, everything that goes along with the head. So let's grab that and bring that over. There we go. So this is the base of my head. It may look pretty simple and you may think it breaks down very easily. However, there is quite a few components actually into creating the head. So I'm gonna turn off any clipping layers I have so you can see a little bit better. As you can see, my head actually has a shadow. The shadow is overdrawn slightly from the head, so as you look left and right, you can make the shadows appear more or less. This will give you a bit more of a realistic look. Like I said, three-dimensionality. I'll be repeating that a lot. I have my blush separate. This will allow you to toggle the blush on and off. So if you wanna blush when you're smiling, you can do that. Or you can have it toggled on and off with a certain expression. And then I have the base color of my face. It is pretty much just my skin tone with no shading, nothing on it. I personally put a hairline in here just because my bangs have a bit of a translucent effect to them. But you don't need to have this. Your base of your face can just be a solid skin tone. And you may notice that my face actually has a outline, just a solid outline of my face ready to go and be used. The reason why I do this is as I deform, if I kept them together, I found that it would cause a difference in thickness throughout the lines. But by making the lines separate, I can keep the line thickness more uniform as I move my face left and right in Live 2D. So separating those will be very helpful for if you're rigging yourself or if you're having someone else rig it for you. The nose for me, I have divided into three sections. I have the shading or the upper shadow that's on my nose. I do have a little bit of shading under my nose. However, it's so minuscule that I just ended up keeping them together. I have the nose line, such as the line that will appear for me looking left and right and make give me the direction in which my nose is pointing. And I have a base shading for my nose, which is just my skin tone. I do this so if components from under my mouth, such as my teeth or the base of my mouth, or for example, the if I wanted to do my face turn full 90 degrees, I would have a base component so that I could cut off the section of my eye that would appear and make it look more three-dimensional. So that's the nose. It's pretty simple, the nose, honestly. All right, now looking at the mouth, we're gonna look at how I separate the mouth pieces. As you can see, I have an outer tongue component here. This is so if you want to have a tongue toggle, which your, sticks out your tongue, uh, you need to have this component so you can actually have a tongue to stick out. This isn't mandatory if you don't want to have a tongue toggle, but I wanted to show you guys this. So if you did want a tongue toggle, you knew what you would have to do. So that's the tongue component. Now moving on to the actual important components of the mouth, such as what you will need to do any mouth rigging at all. You're going to need your upper, upper lip. As you can see, it is just your skin tone. It's no shading, nothing to it. I find keeping your lips as bare minimum as possible is what's best for you. As you can see, my bottom lip is the exact same way. There's no shading. I separated, because I have no shading, you can imagine that my lip gloss, which you see, is separated from the actual base. This is so as I deform the bottom lip of my mouth, 
I can more accurately draw the lip gloss or the lipstick or anything to the shape of my mouth in accordance to what I've done. As you can see, I have my lip line here as well. I only have one in my visual. I will just copy this and duplicate it in VTube in Live 2D just because I want to keep them exactly the same. I don't want to have different in thickness. I want to try to keep them as similar as possible. So I just duplicate this in Live, in live 2D. Moving on to the inner portions of my mouth, I have my upper teeth. I separate my upper teeth into two components, the front section of my teeth, and I also have the molars of my teeth. This is because our palettes are actually kind of ovular or oval shaped. So by separating these as I move left and right, I can make the inner shape of my palette resemble a more realistic palette and to what your palette will look in real life or IRL. Um, my bottom teeth are the same way. I have the front section of my teeth and then I have my molars for my teeth. I also have my tongue, the inner portion of my tongue separate so that I can rig that and have my teeth and my molars and stuff invisible and also so that I can connect it with my tongue when I go to stick it out. So that's how that is. And of course, I had the base of my mouth, the back of the mouth. I keep my back of the mouth as one solid piece. I just set my um, my meshes a very certain way for rigging that, but you could separate the inner section of the mouth, such as where your throat would be, and the actual inside of your mouth as two separate pieces. Either way, it will work fine. The last component that we're going to cover is how I separate my bangs and my hair. A lot of my hair, personally, on this model is feathers, but you can get the kind, same kind of gist as to if you want that really fluffy, soft, wiggly hair that a lot of VTubers have. You want to separate it, like I said. Separation is key when it comes to making a VTuber model. As you can see here, my hair has this middle bang piece here. I have that separated from the actual base of my bang, and I also do have the shadow for that separate as well. This, like I said, just allows it to move individually and have a little bit more physics on its own. I then have the center section of my bang. That center section does have its own bang. I separated this into two components and I just kept them together by using a deform mesh in Live 2D, but you can honestly keep that as one solid piece. I have my side bangs, which I did actually separate, which I forgot to save apparently, but I have them separated. As you can see here with the side bang shadows, this is what they would look like as two separate bangs. So you'd want to keep those separate so you can move them individually. Um, my side bangs here, my long pieces of hair that go along the side of my face. I have an outer portion to that and I have an inner portion, which I purposely kept as one solid piece. The reason why I did this is because this piece doesn't really move much. It just ensures that as this piece bounces around and moves, my bald egg head and the sides of my faces, my face doesn't show. This side also does have its own shadow as well. Like I said, three dimensionality is something I really like with my models. And this side, the side of my head also does have these little tiny flyaway hairs that have an individual movement all on its own. I like this, just lets a little bit more bounce and liveliness to my face and my model. That's just what I like to do. So yeah, this is my little introduction to how to make your own VTuber model, how to slice it up for rigging, and how to get ready to get your model rigged. I do plan in the future to make a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to rig your model with eye movements, mouth movements, um, X and Y movements, all of that. So I hope you all will stay tuned and that I will see you all next time. Bye.